Hello, welcome to the GTV South Sudan Global. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe as we will continue to bring you informative videos. While the race of South Sudan is in a tribulation apocalypse period, the occupants of J1 fathers are living their lives in a fast lane. South Sudan constitutes two nations in one, the nation of the four Hamnats and the nation of the decadent, rich class J1 Palace residents. The benefits J1 provides to its residents are limitless. For instance, oil and gold revenues circulate in J1 before the black market gets its share. The glamorous and glitzy life of J1 homo sapiens is a sight to behold. Who can forget the extravagant weddings in Freedom Hall? Climate change induces V8 band of harm bodyguards and castles in neighboring countries. Who can forget the long queue of psychopaths lining up for a piece of forbidden cake? Stolen money in J1 will a dealer's homes. The above observations have made working in J1 a matter of life and death. What are the creative ways South Sudanese use to land a job at J1? Our brave patriots in J1 narrated to us two creative ways. South Sudanese are using to secure jobs in J1 because of, of confidentiality. We will use Insider 1 and Insider 2. In our previous analysis, Insiders 1 and 2 told the country that President Kiir was not in charge of South Sudan. We thank them for these great episodes. Let's dive in. Number 1. Ambitious South Sudanese resort to bribing power brokers to secure a job in J1 or in the government. According to an insider one revelation, the most common approach South Sudanese use is to bribe power brokers in J1. For someone to work in J1, money must change hands. The power brokers belong to President Keir's inner circle. They laugh, cry, and dine with President Keir. I feel sad every time South Sudanese congratulate on social media platforms someone President Keir appoints. Countless people have sold their houses or properties so that they could raise money to bribe the power brokers. That's why President Keir's government is full of failures. President Keir does not employ people based on merit, but rather on the amount of money the power brokers received. Insider one said in disbelief, these power brokers arrange everything from drafting a Republican decree to arranging a photo op sessions between President Keir and the new recruits. Of course, President Keir's family, Adut and Mama Ayandit, get their cut from the money the new recruit has paid the power brokers. Do you think this madness, bracket bribing brokers, would continue? A President Gay's family was not getting some cuts. Insider 2 added, The power brokers control ministries of their choices. For instance, Bolmel controls the Minister of Finance and Flanning. Bolmel has even announced the appointment of the new Minister of Finance and Flanning, Honorable Daniel Awal. On the other hand, Tudike Ogalwak controls the Petroleum and Mining Ministries. General Okolokor Kuch, National Security Service Director General, plays an outside role in appointment in Nile Fed and other state corporations inside the two interrupts. I think it is up to the South Sudanese to overhaul this current Janjaweed system. We have no functional government. We have just a system of power brokers running country blindly. Inside the one concluded. Number two, ambitious South Sudanese women resort to using their bodies to secure jobs in J1. South Sudanese women with no money or connections use their physical assets, bodies, to secure jobs in J1. Insiders 1 and 2 shed more light on this practice. J1 is full of good-looking women. There are many slave queens here. Here in J1, there are many married women who abandoned their matrimonial homes for power brokers. Insider 2 complained. I do disagree with my colleague because some male colleagues do connect their female relatives to J1 power brokers as a means to carry papers, bracket promotions. Some colleagues, especially from Kidit's bracket president kids backyard, have destroyed many schoolgirls. Just imagine these guys luring schoolgirls into hotels in Kampala, Nairobi, or Dubai. Their result is unwanted pregnancies or contracting AIDS virus. Insider 1 
and Hamid is point home. When a young woman comes here, she becomes a sex slave for power brokers. South Sudan requires each of us to contribute meaningfully, Insider 2 concluded. Social media platforms are awash with slave queens taunting each other and bragging about who has the latest iPhone or V8. We have seen slave queens expose the behind the scenes activities of J1 power brokers. In reality, J1 is where the elites crush the dreams of millions of South Sudanese. The country owes a huge credit to the patriots, insiders 1 and 2, for their tireless work in exposing the modern day valley of Hina J1, where immorality, greed, and avarice rule the streets. We urge South Sudanese men and women to be careful of the yeast of Pharisees and Sadducees, South Sudan's ruling elite. What do you think? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe to the GTV, South Sudan Global.